Yeah, so I've been struggling to find a Griffin's Eye on my single player account. Now, I've been finding tons of other stuff, all things that are just as rare or rare, but man, I've been struggling to get that Griffin's Eye. So I decided to go ahead and hit a place that's kind of semi well known for finding a Griffin's Eye, hitting Pindle for over 30 hours. Now, I didn't just strictly only set the Pindle. If a good Terra Zone popped up, we'll call things like the Chaos Sanctuary and Dariel, or some other places that I like to run. I went ahead and hit those Terra Zones as well. But across these 30 hours, I hit probably a half dozen to 10 Terra Zones, and I did over 2,600 Pindle runs trying to find this Griffin's Eye. I'm gonna make sure you stick around to see, did I find that Griffin's Eye? And I can tell you what, I did find a ton of other rare items along the way. Now, questions that always get asked that I'll answer right up here. When I was running Pindle, I just did it on Players 1 because Pindle will drop two items every single time, regardless of player's count. So I went with that and I had like 400 and about 67% magic find. Now, did I end up finding that Griffin's eye on these sets of runs? Stick around and find out. Now, 83 runs into running Pindle and I get a terrorized Talrash's tomb. So we got to go hit it, right? And on the very first run, almost the very first pack I hit, boom, absolutely crazy, a low rune right off the bat. So I got to decide, what am I going to make with that Hyrule right there? A little bit later, we're back out at Pindle because you see that Terra Zone has changed. It's not as good. So here we go. We got a rare ring. Don't show a ton of rares, but when they're good, I will. And here we get an okay one at 10 FCR, 5 to strength, 10 all res with the poison a little bit higher. A short time later here, we actually get a unique Grand Charm. We're not in Terra Zone, so there's only one option for what this is. It's the exciting one, another Geed's Grand Charm. Gotta see if it rolls good. I have a pretty good one on this character already. Oof, boy. That's really dang close to anti-perfect. That's probably the absolute perfect reaction when you find a Geed's that's like this. Just over 200 runs in and we get a Sacred Armor. Not unique though. This is indeed the set one. This is gonna be for the Immortal King set. And that is the Immortal King Soul Cage. Ten rounds later here, I find an item I didn't even know that I wanted so bad. But once I got it, it's pretty darn cool because, hey, maybe we can make a throw barb coming up here. We got some ethereal war shrieks. Pretty neat. Now, after you find a few of these, they're not quite as exciting as when you find your first one on single player or at the beginning of a ladder. But off of not even Pindle, but one of the other random monsters in its little pack there, we get that unique Shaco, and it is, of course, the Harlequin's Crest. Run 256, we get an absolute go-to for a lot of those Javazons. If you're rocking that Lightning Fury, this is an absolute great choice. This is Titan's Revenge. Little bit of a dry spell from Pindle, but no big deal. I streamed a lot of these right here on this channel, so I had a great time chatting up with everybody, but we get an Eaton Axe that's unique. It's five sockets or bust. We get the five sockets. Now in this run, I finally get that diadem to drop for me. Oh man. Rare diadem. The pain is real. Almost could bring a grown man to tears, but that was so close to my Griffin's eye. If only I had like three more magic find. 641. I usually don't show a ton of rares, but I actually get a okay pair of rare boots here. They are tri-res. Technically one is poison. If you're rocking that energy shield sorceress, poison res is actually important. So run 660, we got the rare Colossus Blade highlight. This is the set Colossus Blade. It isn't used a ton, but Volcatho's Sacred Charge is definitely a rare one. Thank you, my friend, for becoming a channel member here right in the middle of this drop highlight. Yeah, his name is Friend on YouTube, but unexpectedly, you don't really look for him out here, but you'll take him. You'll take him. I get a high rune off of Pindle, and that is another one of these Vex runes. I got quite a few on single player. I actually had to cube up a bunch of Vex runes on single player because I've just found so many. 788, and we get a unique in one of my favorite bases of all time. Yep, that's a unique Ogre Maul. And that is, of course, the Windhammer. Getting a unique ring here at 911, and ooh, is that my stone of jordan no but it's a pretty decently rolled raven frost nonetheless 
First incredibly rare item here, just a little over 900 runs, and do you know what a unique Hydra Bow is? Fellas, fellas, fellas. Yes, that is correct. Here is the Wind Force, an absolute iconic legend here on Diablo 2. Now we're snagging another pretty rare one here at 1051. Unique Bloodlord Skull. Found quite a few of these here on single player, but you want it to roll good if you're going to get one. And that is this Dark Force Spawn. And 233, pretty good roll. Pretty good. Just a short time later, get another super rare one. You see that green Cataceus right there? That is the Grizz Caddy. This is another one where you want to get the max socket sort to complete bust essentially. So, ba boom, we get those four open sockets. Now, this is a super rare one, and the fact that this ends up being ethereal sets the rarity right off the chart. Now, I don't think this would be something necessarily you'd want to slam a Zod into, but here we get an ethereal Earth Spirit. This one has a little bit of a long backstory. It's not really used super often. It's not super, super rare, but I have a soft spot just based upon my childhood for anything Bullrog Blague related along with Ogre Mulls, of course, but this is the Flame Bellow. We got ourselves a terrorized arcane sanctuary and we're gonna go out and hit it. Hopefully get some high runes, hopefully get some unique items. And hey, here's a pretty decent one. We got some Marowaks. We don't find a ton out there though, so we're back at Pindle a short time later here. And we get a unique Gilded Shield. Haven't found too many of these here on single player, so I'm glad to get it. And we get ourselves a Herald of Zacharoom, better known as the Haas. Here we get that go-to for the Enchant Sorceress at 1,431. That's this unique Chukognu? Yeah, that sounds about right. The Demon Machine. Here's our first of several facets. That's what that unique jewel is, as I'm sure y'all are aware. Can I get some 5 fives in my life? <laughs> it's a 5-3 poison. All right, we'll take it. 1558 we get a rare one here it's almost never used but it is kind of rare so i'm gonna go ahead and note it that is a set ward and it looks pretty darn cool too that's tabex glory like i said before you aren't necessarily expecting to get runes out here here isn't exactly a high rune but i'm obviously gonna pick up and take this um rune with me here's another case of kind of rare not used all that much but here the shadow plate, it's up behind the name of the last donator, but that is Steel Carapace. Like I said a minute ago, the first of several facets I find on these runs, and here's that next unique jewel. Am I getting it a 5-5 at least now? Come on, baby. Do it to me. I need some more 5-5s. Five Ugh. Good old 4-4 four, four fire. 1778, here we pull one of the rarest items you can get from Pindle. And that's a unique sacred armor. Now, from Pindle, it cannot be Tyrael's Might, so we already know what it is before even identifying it. This is, of course, the green version, not the blue, and that is Templar's Might. I found one of these about a month ago, but I'm still happy, and always happy, to find incredibly rare items. Terrorized Cows, you know we gotta go hit it. I don't show a ton, ton of different runeward bases, but... Here we got a superior ethereal colossus blade. You could Larzig this and it will get five sockets every time. A very good option as a base for the death rune word. And then now being a magic finder, of course any magic find charms that are pretty darn good, you know I'm gonna show that to y'all. And here this small charm is one of those magic find charms. Doesn't roll with the perfect seven, but six magic find along with nine fire res, just a little bit off of perfect on the res too. Now this one's gonna be strange to y'all. You're probably thinking, why did you even pick that up and identify it? Well, I've been looking for sort of like, I'll call it a throwback weapon. Usually you'd have Cruel Colossus Blades of Quickness or of Evisceration. That would be cruel with having a very, very high, almost close to 300% enhanced damage. The Quickness mod is 40% increased attack speed and the Evisceration 
is very high max damage. I believe it can go up to somewhere in the 50s. So I thought this was kind of funny. I've been picking up Ogre Axes, Ogre Mauls, trying to get a cool Ogre Axe of Evisceration or Quickness. And this is the closest I could get. Rolling with three open sockets, kind of strange. Let me know if you ever had a CCBQ down in the comments back in the day. But here we are back at Pindle and we get a unique ring. Come on, you can do it. Ah, just a Nagel, but at least it's 29 Magic Vine. 2,000 runs in here and we got a terrorized, what is this, Bloodmore, I think? I decided to hit it. It's super easy, just for fun, whatevs. We get another case of the super, super rare kind of, but it's not used as often. I go ahead and show somebody quickly my setup of how it regenerates your life and gets rid of that poison. So, But here we have the Leviathan. And a, another pretty cool runeward base here. Like I said, I don't show a ton, but when they are pretty darn good, I guess I'll show them up. Here's a superior Scarab Husk, 8% enhanced defense with four open sockets. Now back at Pindle, and this set item has kind of been raining from the sky for me over the last month or two. You can see I'm a little bit surprised there. Like, I can't even believe it's fallen so often. But here from Pindle, we get another Tal Rasha's Guardianship. Shockingly enough, another rare item, and we're a little over 2,000 Pindle runs in now. Some rare boots. The maximum poison res, which if you're rocking that energy shield, that's the important one you want to get. It's got poison length reduced and a pretty good amount of magic find. The cold res is super high. I wish that enhanced defense rolled as a third resistance. Now, surprisingly enough, the first skiller of the day here, almost 2,100 runs in. Whoops, a little miss on the first click, but we get a... One to trap skills for the assassin. And you might have thought I was being hyperbolic saying that the Talarasha's armor was literally raining from the sky for me, but not even that much longer. This was like an hour later, actual real time. I find another one of Talarasha's guardianship. Just some of that Diablo 2 RNG for you. Now here's an item at 2200 runs in. I always want to find a Thera, but literally my entire life out of like 50 of these I've found, if not more, it's never been ethereal. Obviously this is Scalder's Ire. And another repeat drop of something super, super rare. Still have not gotten that Griffiths yet. Come on game, give me some better RNG, but here we get another Grizz Caddy. Like I said, four sockets or bust. And three sockets. Wah, wah. And another rare ring, shockingly enough, that rolls pretty okay. I wish I had a little bit more on it, but interesting getting the cast rate along with 92 mana. And of course, making up for the lack of fire res on a spirit, this does have 20 to fire res. Oh my gosh, Phil's wearing a hat on stream. Mind blown, but then once again, you don't expect it from Pindle. You don't, but it can definitely happen here. We get an Ohm rune from Pindle, an Ohm. Now, I already have like five or six of these, so got to start finding some good rune words to make out of these, huh? Now, you know, you know we got to hit that terrorized world stone keep in. Another case of the rare, but not really used all that much. We got this scissored Zwayahya, Zwayahya. And that is, of course, for the Natalia set, Natalia's Mark. And then just a run or two later, you see that sitting there, an absolute iconic classic. We got that unique swirling crystal. That's the Oculus, baby. Then just a little bit while later, once again, you don't really expect it here from Pindle, but the runes can be dropping, you know? So here, not a high rune, but a mid rune that I do note for sure here in these videos, and that is the pull rune. Noting a grand charm that is not a skiller is pretty rare, but we got Terrorized Cast Sanctuary. Let's get after it. Here we got a max of the 30 to cold res, making up for that cold Sunday, along with 29 to life. And you know I gotta note it. You know it. Unique Ogrimal. It is, of course, the wind hammer. I absolutely do not note every single Sunder Charm, but when they roll, 
this bad, I've got to. <laughs> Crazy enough, this is probably my third anti-perfect fire sunder charm in this entire sets of runs. Keeping it rocking and rolling here in a terrorized chaos sanctuary and a unique thunder mall. This is a pretty darn rare one and top five best names of any unique item in the game. That is the Cranium Basher. Terrorize Andaro, so you know we gotta hit it, you know it. And here we get those unique vampire bone gloves. And you know them, you love them, you budget smiters. That's Dracul's Grasp. And of course, being terrorized, Andaro can drop me anything. So here is a pretty darn rare one right here. We've got the Crown of Ages. We're hoping for two sockets and a good roll for things like the Resistance. But boom, we get the two to sockets. 27 res, not bad. And like I said, being terrorized, any item in the game, right? Oh my goodness. Some of y'all might have seen this one already. I had to do a special clip just for it. But this is the first time in my entire life that I have found this one, fellas, fellas, fellas. And this is, of course, Mang Song's Lesson. All right, we'll scoot on a little bit longer here. And like I said, a ton of facets I find in these sets of runs. So here you go. I've found enough of them. I've ID'd enough of them. This one's probably got to be 5-5, five, five, huh? Just by statistical odds, it must be. Of course it's not. Of course. Being terrorized here, I figured Andaro just dropped me a Sunder Charm, right? Must be. Must be a Sunder Charm. Wait a second, I can't pick it up. Oh, good job, Phil. You're smart. That means it's a Gage Grand Charm. Luckily for me, this one rolled not bad. Not perfect, but not bad. And we keep it rolling here with the rare, rare, rare for me, Terrorize and Daryl. We've got that Silver Edge Dax, but actually I go ahead and pick up this Berserker Act that's also unique. And that's of course, the Death Cleaver. And we'll go ahead and wrap everything up with the final run here for Terrorize and Daryl. There you see it switched over to the next Terror Zone. And we've got a unique Blood Spirit, and that's Cerberus Bite. Take care, everybody. Hit the like button before you go, and check this video out right here.